Hey there, if you're thinking about going camping at Yellowstone National Park, this video is for you. I'm going to cover everything you need to know to prepare for your camping trip to Yellowstone. My name's Matt, and my wife and I recently returned from a trip to Yellowstone where we camped outside of the park, and we had a fox visit our campground. And so we, we've really enjoyed camping over the years, and so we want to try to make your trip a little easier and go over some things that you need to know. First thing is, I just want to talk a little bit about why we really like to camp there, what we think some of the advantages are. First thing is that it's it's much cheaper than hotels or lodges in the park. The lodges in the park cost around two to $400 a night. Hotels outside of the park cost, during the busy season, around $200 a night. So campgrounds in the park only cost between 15 and 30 bucks a night for the most part. If you camp in the park, it's much less driving. You're gonna be closer to the sites. You know, Yellowstone's laid out kind of like a figure eight. They call it the Grand Loop Road. And just to get to the Grand Loop Road from the entrance, from the closest entrance is 15 mile drive. So, you know, if you stay outside of the park, you're driving to the park and then you have to drive into the park for a little while. If you camp right there, you're right close to the site. So it's really a nice way to save some time and to see more sites. Now, if you camp outside of the park, you're still going to be driving quite a ways to the park and then into the park. But the trade-off here is that you have fewer crowds. You're, you've got more privacy. The campgrounds are typically a little bigger. Um, some people say a little nicer outside of the park. They're forest service campgrounds for the most part. And we'll go over some of those later as well. But, you know, you kind of trade in driving time for privacy if you do that way. Another thing we really enjoy about the camp about camping at Yellowstone is seeing the wildlife. Uh, you'll get visited by fox, coyotes, um, elk, and maybe even bears, bison. Um, so it's just really cool to kind of be near that wildlife. One time we were camping and we, at night, we heard some coyotes howling kind of near our campground. So it's just something that uh, really kind of connects you with nature. It's really pretty cool. Uh, if you camp in the park, they'll do ranger programs at night. So five, I think five or seven of the campgrounds have ranger programs that they'll do at night. So these are really nice way to end out your day. You've, you've been sightseeing all around the park all day, come back to your campground, eat dinner, and then you can just walk over to the amphitheater and listen to a ranger give a presentation. They'll have a, oftentimes they'll have a big screen up there and they'll do a slideshow and <laughs> it's really a pretty cool thing. Um, another reason why I like camping is the campfires. It's just nice to gather around the campfire at night. People connect and do a lot of talking when you're hanging out around the campfire. Plus, you got the s'mores. Um, and then finally, just waking up to the mountain morning air is one of my favorite things. Um, it's just, you know, again, it really helps you feel connected to nature. And that's really why you're going to Yellowstone in a lot of reason, in a lot of ways is to connect to nature. So uh, those are the reasons why... We really like camping at Yellowstone. Now we, we also stay at a hotel sometimes when we go, so um, those are great too. There's, we'll give more tips on that later, but um, we like doing both. We like camping, we like staying in a hotel. Either way, you get to Yellowstone is great, but, but they're different experiences. So, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about here in this video is camping inside the park, and then a little later I'll talk about camping outside of the park. And then I'll finish off by talking about some of the general things you need to know about camping in the whole area. So inside the park, there are 12 campgrounds. Five of them are places that you need to reserve um, ahead of time. So they're larger campgrounds, usually between 250 to 430 campsites. And you have to make a reservation for those ahead of time. The other, and those five campgrounds, by the way, are typically on the lower well, they're all on the lower loop. Um, so those are Madison, Grant, um, Bridge Bay, Fishing Bridge RV Park, and Canyon Village. And they're all located on the lower loop. The seven other campgrounds are first come, first serve. They're smaller campgrounds. You can't make a reservation. You just have to show up and hope to get a site. Six of them are located on the upper loop, including... Uh, three, well, two of them are in Lamar Valley up in the very northeast corner. 
one of them's close by in Tower. And then there is one way down south uh, called Lewis Lake that's uh, a first come first serve as well. These campsites are open from mid-June to mid-September typically. That's the camping season there. Uh, Madison does stay open until October and Mammoth Campground stays open year-round. When, when do they fill up? They fill up, the big RV sites fill up very quickly, um, probably before the camping season even begins. So Yellowstone's kind of notorious for having smaller campsites um, and RV sites. Probably many of these campgrounds built before big Class A RVs were, were ever created. So they're really kind of smaller campsites. The amount of sites that are 40 inches and longer, or 40 feet and longer, are very, very limited. And I'm doing this video right now in July, and they are booked through the end of the season. All the big ones are booked through all the way through. The, the way they do the measurements, by the way, is they'll say 40 feet combined between your vehicle and your trailer. So if you if you have a tow behind trailer, Yellowstone does the measurement for the whole thing. And that's because they only have one place to park to, or to back into. So you just have like your road and then like a place to back into for your campsite. And you can't park your trailer and then your vehicle right next to the trailer. You only have the one spot to back into so you can't be hanging out into the road. So those bigger ones get booked up really quickly and then, you know, only the smaller ones are left. Now the smaller ones, including tent sites, so small RV sites and tent sites, right now it's July, they're booked out for about five weeks. Um, so the, the bottom line here on these reserv reserve sites is to get your reservation early. This year is coronavirus time and uh, seven, the seven first come first serve sites are all closed for the year. Plus one of the reserve sites, Fishing Bridge RV Park is also closed for remodeling. So the, the time frames may be a little off this year. Maybe they're booked out more than they normally would be because these other sites, it's hard to say. But obviously if you're gonna make a reservation, you wanna do it as early as possible. Now on the first come first serve sites, in years other than 2020, since they're closed this year, you wanna to get to those sites early in the day. And I mean, early in the morning, I should say. I have been reading reviews on these where people are saying they're getting they're, they're getting to these sites at like five or six in the morning in order to get a spot. And they'll sometimes they'll just sit there and wait until the checkout time at 10 o'clock and see whoever leaves and then they'll take their site. So it's, it can be kind of a process, it sounds like, um, you know, rather than kind of sightseeing all day and then finding your campsite at night, you need to go there way early in the morning. You're probably gonna need to wait in line. Around 10 o'clock when people leave, you can get your site and then you can go sightseeing. So if that sounds like something you wanna do, that doesn't really sound like something I wanna do, but um, I have heard people say that it was worth it because two of those first come first serve sites are located in Lamar Valley and they're not that big and they're located next to some creeks, some streams. So you're going to probably be able to see quite a bit of wildlife and have a really, really nice experience with nature there. You just might have to get there way early and wait for it that day. So if that's, you know, something you want to do, then think about it. Now, I mean, maybe you get lucky or whatever and you find a site later in the day, but you know, Yellowstone's getting very busy. All the baby boomers are retiring and they seem like, seems like they all bought RVs and they're all traveling around the country to these national parks with their, with their super cheap annual passes that they get for being seniors, their senior discounts. So, uh, it, it's tough to find a camping spot nowadays on these first come first serve sometimes. Okay. The, what is the cost of these camping sites? Well, Typically $15 to $32 a night, except for Fishing Bridge RV Park, which is $79 a night. If you're a hiker or a biker and you don't have a vehicle and you're just kind of biking around or something, I've never seen these people, but I guess they are out there, um, the site would be less than $10 a night. So very affordable. Um, now I have a chart 
in the description, I'll put a link to um, my website, which has a chart on all the breakdown. I've, I've shown a, like I put together a little breakdown on what each campsite has. And so if you're planning a trip, it, it could be very helpful for you to kind of look at it. It shows, um, you know, the costs and generate whether they have generators or showers, things like that. So check that out if you're if you're getting ready to go there and you need a little help planning. How do you book the website? You book it through a company called Yellowstone National Park Lodges .com. They handle uh, a, a bunch of things for Yellowstone National Park. So it's kind of farmed out, um, contracted out to this company. So they handle the reservations for those, um, for the five re reserved camping sites, along with the lodges and the hotels in the park. And they, they offer a variety of other things too. Um, there's also a phone number that you can call to, to book if you want to do it that way. Okay, what are the measurements for Yellowstone? Well, I, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but typically smaller RVs and trailers. So I mentioned that uh, 40 feet is the limit, and that's a combined limit between the vehicle and the trailer. Or if you're in an RV, of course, that's the RV length. Uh, Mammoth does take larger vehicles. So I think it's 70 or sorry, 65 foot limit at Mammoth during the summer, but during the winter, it's only 30 foot. So, um, so that's the way that Yellowstone does those measurements. And that's, um, kind of the general sizes that they're looking at. Um, the campsites, you know, one of the complaints about camping in Yellowstone that I've seen from people online is that, uh, the sites are kind of small. They feel like they're crammed in there a bit. You know, your neighbors are just, just off to the side of you. I don't really remember that being much of an issue when we've camped there before. I think the last two times I've camped there, I've been outside of the park and, and I did notice this last time that, uh, that the site was really nice and it did feel like I had some space for my neighbors. So maybe next time I go to the national park site, I'll, I'll notice if I feel a little crammed, but I haven't felt that way before. So I'm just telling you, that's kind of one of the complaints that I've seen from people. Um, generators. If you have a generator, there are seven campsites in the park that allow you to have a generator and you can run it from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., but not, not at night, of course. And again, you can kind of find that in the, you can find that information in the chart in the description. The hookups. Um, only the, mm, let's see, there's five or seven campsites in the park, the five reserve sites, and I believe two others that offer hookups. So the two biggest um, first come first serve sites are Norris and Mammoth. Those tend to have more amenities than the other first come first serve sites. And those two I believe have hookups as well. There is a stay limit in Yellowstone. You can stay 14 days at a time at any of the sites except for Fishing Bridge RV Park, which does not have a limit at all. You could stay there all season, I guess. Um, there are campsites in the back country. So, you know, most people are going to see Yellowstone kind of from the car and from the Grand Loop, but there's so much more to explore at Yellowstone. If you just try to get off the beaten path a little bit, you'd have to hike a little bit. And there are quite a few hikers that kind of go off into the uh, less crowded areas of Yellowstone. If you're one of those, if you're a backcountry a backpacker person, you need to get a permit before you can camp. So um, I put a link to that in the website below as well. And uh, th there's just campgrounds all over the place that you can reserve through this permit process. So check that out if you wanna go backpacking. And finally, just for 2020, I've already mentioned a few things here, but the updates for 2020 are that the seven first come first serve campgrounds are closed, I believe because of coronavirus or the lack of uh, ranger help that they can have or something. And then the Fishing Bridge RV Park is closed for remodeling, I believe. So there are four campgrounds that are open. The four reserved campgrounds are open. Um, and then again, there's no ranger programs in 2020 due to the coronavirus. So 
those are kind of all the updates and all the information you need to know about camping within Yellowstone. And again, you can check out the, the link in the description there for, for some more detailed information about it. Okay, now let's talk about camping outside of the park. Now, Yellowstone's a, a massive park, so that means all the ecosystem around, again, all the mountains around and all that, is, is even larger. Um, so there are just thousands of campsites, it seems like, hundreds at least, uh, outside of Yellowstone. And so I don't have the ability to kind of break those down and go into each of them, of course. But let me just go over some general things that you need to know about camping outside of the park. First of all, there's more options than camping in the park. You have, you know, more options in terms of RV length, in terms of amenities. You know, there's KOAs that are going to offer uh, swimming pools and other other fun things that you can do with your family. Of course, you know, you also have a, a wider variety in how much they're going to cost. A lot of the Forest Service campgrounds are only 20 bucks a night. But you can get much more expensive ones if you're going for more amenities and all that. And then, of course, if you go with private campgrounds, they're going to have like KOAs and things where they're going to have even more amenities and showers and all that that you're going to pay more money for. So more options is one of the oops, more options is one of the benefits there. Uh, a longer camping season is another main benefit to it. Um, I mentioned Yellowstone within the park, June to September typically, but outside of the park you're going to be able to find campgrounds outside of those dates. There are some free campsites. These are also typically Forest Service sites. Um, I've got a link to those, to, to a little map that has some of the free sites. It's not an ex extensive list or anything like that, but it has some of the free camping sites in the in that link below. And then um, just a tip is to kind of consider the area. I mean, if, again, you're going to be driving a long way to get to the park a lot of times if you're camping outside. So think about, you know, where you want to stay and what you want to see and all that. For example, if you camp near Cody, Wyoming, out on the east side, it's going to take you two and a half hours to drive to Old Faithful. So you drive it into the park and down around and you get to Old Faithful. It takes you two and a half hours just to do that. So, um, you know, you want to plan out your, your trip so you're not just spending the whole thing driving. Um, one idea would be to to camp maybe on one side of the park. If you're in an RV and you're a little more mobile and you're driving your RV around anyway, you could camp out on like the west side and then drive in through and then go out to Cody and stay one night and then kind of head up to Mammoth or something like that. So you could bounce around a little bit so that you're not um, kind of driving the loops and all the way back. So that's an idea for you if you're camping outside. If you're camping, or if you're also going to see Grand Teton National Park, you might want to camp on the south side of Yellowstone, so you have access to both parks without driving a crazy amount of distance. So, um, so that's a little bit about camping outside of the park. Just a couple more things that uh, apply to both of them here. Number one, you have to consider the weather. So the temperatures at Yellowstone during the summer season, during the the camping season is um, typically they get up to around the 60s or the 70s during the day. Sometimes you'll see them get in the 80s, but average is 60s, 70s during the day, which is really nice temperatures, really comfortable, beautiful days. But at night, it gets down to the 30s. Even in the, the hot part of the season in July, it's getting down to the 30s at night. So you need to be um, prepared, prepared. If you're tenting it, you need to have a sleeping bag that's warm enough you know, dress in layers, so just be prepared for those big temperature changes. We are in the Rockies after all. And then um, bear boxes. So I mentioned that bears might visit your campsite. This could be in the park or outside of the park. Um, so they're, they're very, all the campgrounds around there say you need to be bear aware. And you need to put your food either in your car, in your trailer, or in a bear box. They have these bear boxes within the campsites that you can put your food at night. Basically, don't be leaving out a lot of odors that will draw the bears into your campground. So like if you have some soup or something like that, you don't want to just pour that out on the ground. Um, you know, dispose of it, you know, in the garbage can so that the bears can't smell it. And then last thing, if you bring a firewood to the campground, 
you, you actually don't want to bring your firewood from home or from like maybe your home uh, supermarket or gas station or something like that. It's better. They encourage you to buy it either at your campsite or there in the area of Yellowstone. That's because there's bugs and pests in the wood and they don't want you transporting your pests from one area to another area. This is a huge problem with forests nowadays. They have these beetles that are tearing these forests apart. So they want you to get the firewood from local places. Now, if you, if you buy it from the campsite, from the camp host at your campground, typically um, it'll be like seven or eight dollars a bundle. Uh, we think you can get this for cheaper if you buy it in town, like in West Yellowstone or Gardner or Cody or something like that. We think you can get this cheaper if you buy it, you know, in town before you go to your campsite. Okay, so those, that's a kind of a brief summary, not very brief, 20 minutes long, of what you need to know if you go camping at Yellowstone. Thanks for bearing with me. If you got any value out of this vehicle or out of this video, please click the subscribe button. We'll be doing a lot of videos like this on Yellowstone and the other national parks in the Rockies. So if this, um, if that interests you at all, please click subscribe. And if you have any other tips or any other suggestions I want to cover at Yellowstone or any other national parks to cover, please leave it in the comments below. Thanks for watching.